Okay, we back with another edition of the Dream Interpretation Masterclass. So, so far, we have gone over uh, the structure of the mind and understand the conscious, subconscious, and superconscious, and the correlation of those, the different dimensions, the different bodies that use those different minds. We have gone over the basics of dreams, what dreams are, why we dream, and what the language that these dreams are in, the universal language of the mind. And we have begun to break down symbols, begin to understand the language. We have understood how to write down and record our dreams each night. Um, so we should be doing that every night. And we have um, then also gone over the uh, uh, creation story in from the Bible in the universal language mind and then saw how that was depicting the entire structure of the mind right here so we've that's what we've gone over now so we've understood that our dreams are in a language our mind communicates in a language and we can interpret our dreams through that language we interpret it holy scriptures through that language now today we are going to learn how we are able to decode movies through that language this is huge this is huge uh, for me, at least. I mean, I love it. So, and here, whoops. And in here. All right. Let us begin. So, as a recap, our dreams are the greatest tool for self awareness because you are going into yourself and assessing and looking at the thoughts within your mind. You know what I mean? So, like we said, you know, thoughts are images. So if I ask you to, Think about your best friend, an image of them comes to mind. Think about your favorite food, an image comes to mind. Think about your dream house, an image comes to mind. Think about a balloon, you know, you can tell what color it is. So our, our thoughts are images. So when we go into our dreams, we're seeing the images, the thoughts that are within our mind, so we can become more aware, more self-aware. So the more we understand about the dreams and everything in it, the more we are understanding about ourselves. Right, initial understandings for dreams. Again, one, every dream is about you, the dreamer. I cannot drill this home enough. Now, yes, there are precognitive dreams. Yes, there are visitation dreams. Yes, you can go and meet up with someone else in a dream, but the even those dreams, which are only you know 1% of the dreams that you have, <laughs> even those dreams still hold the exact same message interpreted as if they're just like you can use this language to interpret your life experiences. <laughs> so that when you look around at your life, you can see the different, you know, even though the person is someone else, you can still apply the same interpretation and see that everything is in apply as everything is used. Every, so within your, your regular dreams, the majority of your dreams, they are all going to be, all the people and everything in your dreams are going to be aspects of your own consciousness. So you want to interpret it that way. Dreams are a reflection of the dreamer's consciousness the previous day or two. Your dreams are reflecting how you've been using your mind the last couple of days. So as you've been using your mind during the day, at night you're going into your mind and you're looking around at the thoughts within your mind. So it's very recent. So yes, we can interpret a dream from when you were 11. However, that doesn't really have any benefit or use to you today, except for, you know, maybe healing some sort of, a, you know, trauma or, you know, programming that originated then that is still lingering. Um, so there is that benefit, but for the most part, you want to look at your dreams today because those are going to hold the uh, most pertinent message to you um, related to where you're at right now. All right. So number four, the more attention you give your dreams, the deeper your experience will become. What you put your attention on grows. So writing down your dreams is very important. Interpreting your dreams is very important. But the most important thing, and the rest is you know, useless without it, is applying that message into your life. And the better you are at doing all of these things, then the better you will be at experiencing your dreams. The more dreams you'll experience, the more uh, dreams you'll have, the more vivid they will become, the deeper detail you will have, the 
you know, the more powerful and, you know, epic type dreams you will, you will have. All right, the universal language of the mind is the language that our dreams are in. It's the language of images. A lot of this is some recap. Our mind communicates in images. Our thoughts are images. We just went over that. Write down the symbols as we go over today in the back of your dream journal to start your own glossary. And if you haven't, if you're new and haven't seen the other videos, go back and watch those. There's symbols within each of those. Um, and well, not each of them, this is not the first one, but uh, the second and third one, there's lots of symbols in those. Create your own journal, create your own glossary, create your own dream dictionary for you to reference back to. As dreams come up in your own dreams that you're writing down, and you know, I'm gonna detail exactly how to pull out the symbols and the different symbols. If there's a symbol that you've pulled out that you've dreamed today, that you haven't dreamed in the past or you don't have in your glossary, Add that to your glossary. You're going to slowly build your own dream dictionary. That way you don't have to rely on anyone else outside of yourself. You have it yourself. And it will amass to an amount that will surpass anything you could find anywhere anyways. All right. Like napkin. Let me show me a dream journal. I mean, a dream dictionary or dream glossary that has napkin in it. <laughs> okay. So how to record your dreams real quick. Brief rundown. If you want more detail, uh, we go over this in week two. So uh, June 4th, yeah, that's when I made this <laughs> in week two, two weeks ago. You'll want to write down tomorrow's date, having an expectation. You write down, I will remember my dreams. Say that out loud. I will remember my dreams. Put your pen or pencil in your notebook. Set it down right next to your bed or somewhere within reach. So you don't have to get up to get it. When you wake up, draw a line down the middle right here. And write down your dream. I was driving a car down the road and came to a red light. I didn't know where I was. Then I woke up. And on the that's what you write down on the left side, the dream. On the right side, well, first, before you get to the right side, you'll underline all of the actual images. Those are the symbols, the actual images. I was driving a car down the road and came to a red light. I didn't know where I was. Then I woke up. I didn't know where I was. That's not a symbol, but that is something you want to keep in mind when you go to do the interpretation. Car represents the physical body. So like we talked about in week two, language is a language of form and function. Car is the form. What is its function? It helps you, you know, reach your goals. Well, how does that function then relate to the consciousness? The physical body is the vehicle that the consciousness uses to reach our goals in life. The road is the path that our consciousness in life that our consciousness uses to reach our goals in life. So road worms and life path. Red light, indication I need to stop and wait. So as you're moving down the path in life, right now you're making progress, but you need to spend some time stopping, waiting, assessing where you're at, and assessing, make sure you know where you want to go and how to get there. You know, I didn't know where I was. You know, so assess where you are at right now in life. It's a quick interpretation on the dream that I just made up. <laughs> All right, now this is the structure of the mind. We went over that in week one, I'm telling you guys, rewatch this video. We rewatched the week one video before each week uh, that we come on here on these lives. I'm telling you, rewatch it every time. There will be more that you do not remember hearing. You'll pick up more. You'll have a deeper understanding of more, the more that you watch it. And so, as always, we dream are in the subconscious mind and we're going to go over all of this. One thing to remember that we're going to go that we went over in week 1 are the uh, uh, elements that are tied to each level. The emotional level is the earth element, the lower astral is the water element less dense than earth, the upper astral is the fire element less dense than water, and the mental level is the uh, air element which is less dense than fire. So these elements are key because it's going to help. We're going to be able to find those when we decode the movie Ad Astra later on. So we're here in the physical, in the third dimension. Our physical body is using the conscious mind here in the third dimension. Our soul is the fourth dimensional body that uses the subconscious mind to experience. These are all places to experience, which we learned about last week uh, in the uh, interpreting the creation story, the field of experience. All the, we use the mind is we aren't our mind. We aren't these bodies, but the consciousness that uses them as tools to understand who we are through experience. Like I say all the time, the difference between believing something and knowing something is experience. I've made a video earlier. The etymology of the word experience is 
observation as your source of knowledge. So through observing what you experience here, you can have it is that is your source of knowing who you are, your true essence. The more you experience everything above this line right here, the more you know that you're more than just your physical body. And so, but remember those elements because we'll be interpreting that because Ad Astra is all about traveling and traversing astral projection deeper into the inner space. Outer space represents inner space. Any type of space movie, except if it's a space movie where they're just like not going very far, um, you know, like Armageddon and all that, then, you know, they don't go very far. They just go right outside of Earth and on an asteroid. You know, the Apollo movies, they just go to the moon. That's it. That one movie with uh, Sandra Bullock, I think, you know, they don't really go very far. But all the movies like Interstellar and all that, where they're going deep, man, it's about the inner inner journey. So add Astros, so that's why we picked that one. I like that one more than um, uh, Interstellar because the message Interstellar is all about uh, accessing the Akashic Record. Communicate with this form of self. Anyways, we're not interpreting that one. <laughs> so uh, we went over this, and last week we opened up and touched on the fact. Oh my God. Last week we touched on the fact that the light I am is beyond the field of experience. Right? You have the conscious, subconscious, superconscious within the mind, these different bodies. But beyond that is the light of the creator, the most high, and your I am, your real self, your true self. This is the, your individual light of the creator. Like, but like we talked about in the, last week, this was first created. There was darkness. It was void. This was all void. We did not have any experiences. So we did not know ourselves because we didn't have any experience. Like a baby being born, a baby doesn't know itself. As it grows up, it understands who it is, what it is. And as we get older, we, you know, form some self, some sense of identity. And as our ego forms and things, we have some sense of identity by experiencing, having, gaining experience. So our true selves, our consciousness, moves out into the superconscious, subconscious, and conscious to experience life over and over through hundreds of lifetimes to then know who we truly are. That's why it's the I am. It's in every holy scripture from the Bible to the Bhagavad Gita to, to all of them. So I am. I am this. I am that. We're looking for the source of our identity or the identity of our source. All right. So numbers in dreams. We go over symbols every single time. So I said, write this down. If you don't have your dream journal yet, then just write it down somewhere else. It'll be available. So you don't necessarily have to write it down, but be ready to put it inside your dream journal. Numbers are key. Um, now, you know, this is not numerology in, in what a lot of people teach. Uh, this is the universal language of the mind. Me, I don't really get into numerology um, because I want to know what the mind is telling me in these numbers. I find it to be 100% accurate every time. Uh, but that's just me. You know, if, you wanna, if you learn numerology, you want to keep going with that, keep going with that. But anytime you're dealing with your dreams, definitely. Look at these numbers because these numbers, you know, dreams are about, like I said, they're your, your dreams are your experience in your inner thoughts. So numbers are a sequence of a, of a thought moving to fruition. So the number one represents individuality, one, oneness. The number two, duality, the inner and the outer. There's now two, two sides of every coin, you know, the left and the right, but it's all still one. Well, you have one body, but your one body can be split into two sides, the left and the right. How do you, you know, where do you delineate the left from the right? So it's still all one. Okay, the number three, creation. Well, the father, a mother, and a child. Number three represents creation. Number four, stability, inner stability. So the, a chair has four legs, a table has four legs because that's why we sit on them, because they have, they are stable. They provide stability, it's four legs. Number five, reasoning. Power of the conscious mind, like we went over week one. Power of the conscious mind is reasoning. Three keys of reasoning, like we went over, is a, a memory, attention, and imagination. Memory, to understand the past. Attention, to understand the present moment. And imagination, to understand the future. Number six, like we went over week one. Intuition, that's the power of the subconscious mind, which is built on reasoning. Intuition, that's your direct grasp of truth. The understanding something without having any reason to understand it and know it. 
you know it to be true. That's why, you're, that's why you can always follow your intuition. You can always trust your subconscious mind. The only difficult part is identifying when it's an intuitive thought and when it's a conscious thought. All right, number seven, visualization. I say visualization is creative imagery, creating an image in your mind, but visualization. Number eight, self-value. Eight is all about value, self-value. Number nine, completion. Fully fulfilling a whole cycle. So then you get back to zero represents power because like from nine to 10, you know, if we are able to, uh, yeah, here. Here we are able to, you know, put a number one right here, make that a 10. You know, with numbers, you always want to deduce down to the one number. So one, zero. So it still represents a one. So we're all the way back to individuality. But it's on a higher level. You know, like if I draw a circle, we're coming all the way back around. We started here and now we're ending here. Really, it's like a spiral upward. I mean, we started here. Came all the way back around. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is a, we're on a whole nother level up higher. But if we looked at this from up above, it would look like this over here. I mean, so we came back around, but it's on a higher level. So for example, individuality. As a child growing up, you begin to understand individuality, who you are as an individual within this group of immediate family. But then as you go to school, you, you're on you're on 10 you mean a whole nother level of individuality and learning what that means amongst a group of people that are not related to you i mean and then after you graduate school you know it's like 100 over here i mean another whole nother level of individuality who you are as a person out into the world all the its possibilities so you're still learning about individuality but it's on a whole nother level and if you don't fully learn any of those lessons with the one, then you know you're gonna kind of, um, you know, have the same lessons when you go to school. You don't learn those proper individual lessons. Family. If you don't do that, then out in life you're gonna come across the same kind of experiences. <laughs> life is as you needed to learn in school. All right. I normally I would go through a lot more through all of this, but we have a lot to go. So Twenty slides on that Astra. So speaking at Astra, here we are. So the etymology of the word ad astra, just breaking down the title. Ad, the etymology of the word ad means to or near. Astra means astral, means spiritual. So the other, another word for the upper astral and lower astral is upper spiritual and lower spiritual. So be getting closer and nearer to your astral self, your non-physical self. I mean, even even another another uh, the true etymology is astral, but a not as old uh, meaning for the word is also stars. But if you look, astra is just a reformation of the word star with an extra a. <laughs> um, so, but stars represent you know are in outer space, and outer space represents the inner space. And we're using this language to decode the movie. So everything in here is going to be as if we're interpreting a dream. So all of this is designed, yeah, it's, it's going to be really cool to see this message. But remember, all of this is designed to help you to understand the language. So we interpreted some dreams in week two. We uh, interpreted some holy scriptures in uh, week three. Now we're going to interpret a movie in, in week four in order for you to uh, identify better and better understand this language. All right, so the title of the movie is showing you that the movie is all about how to get closer to your inner self. You know, interstellar, the inner star system, the inner space. So the synopsis, here's the synopsis of the whole movie. Movie is laying out the journey of the initiate moving into the adept. 
the initiates and the adept, these are, you know, ancient knowledge terms from, you know, secret, secret society school, not secret, uh, mystical schools, uh, secret schools. They had to be in secret in the past because, you know, if I, if I went around talking about Kundalini and everything, people, some of these Christians and things, they, they lose their minds over the comments on my videos. And, um, you know, it's just what they're taught. But, you know, if you were in, a, especially during like the Spanish Inquisition and stuff, talking about the stuff I'm talking about, yeah, they'd be seeking me out, hunting me down, got a reward for my head. <laughs> so they had to be in secret. But that's, these are the, these are the terms that they use then, initiates. Nowadays, you call it like, nowadays you would call it someone going through an awakening. <laughs> you know what I mean? Someone who's woke. <laughs> You know, but not necessarily because there's a lot of people who out here right now who are like going, who are like going through an awakening, who are going through an awakening and things. But you know, they're not really putting any effort into it. It's just kind of sounding fun. It's a trend right now. So, you know, not everybody who's you know talking about awakening or you know being woke or anything is, is an actual initiate. You know, one who is just initiating or starting the journey of self awareness, soul growth and spiritual development you got to put in the work you know nobody can do it for you watching videos ain't going to do it reading books ain't going to do it watching this co entire course 20 times over ain't going to do it you have to implement that information to create an experience to turn the information into knowledge you know you're gonna here i'm real big on knowledge because <laughs> otherwise you're just stuck with belief and having to believe somebody all right so it's the journey of going from an initiate Moving into the adept. What is an adept? An adept is someone who is adept or completely skilled at the steps of this journey of self-awareness, soul growth, and spiritual development. How do you how do you create skills? You experience. You know what I mean? Malcolm Gladwell talks about 10,000 hours is what it takes to reach a level of mastery. So putting 10,000 hours worth of metaphysical, practical metaphysics, applying metaphysics into your life. You know, essentially, you should be at some point, uh, some level of mastery. That's what the mentorship program is all about. It's teaching others to become metaphysical masters themselves. But like if, if you, anybody who's already, who already is a mentee knows, first, one of the first things I tell you, if you're still a mentee a year from now, man, we fail. <laughs> you, you, but you have to put in the work. Either I failed you or you failed yourself by not putting in the effort. In the work. All right. So, starting out, we have a character, Major McBride. He's a rank major because it indicates that this is a this journey and who he is is a major at part of the identity. Everybody in the movie, almost everybody except for his dad, his dad calls him Roy. Everybody else calls him Major. The uh, Pruitt, who, who we'll find out is the ego, he also calls him Roy. But other than those two, everybody else calls him Major. McBride. A bride is, you know, getting married. Marriage is all about commitment. Remember, like I said, everything in a dream is an aspect of yourself. So it's about self-commitment, being committed to the self. So if you want to become an initiate, you have to be someone who is committed to yourself. Remember, I said, I say, very first thing an initiate is starting a journey of self-awareness. You have to be committed to yourself in order to make this journey. And that commitment to the self has to be a major part of your identity, a major part of who you are. Everybody that knows me, and they know what I'm about. <laughs> they know the metaphysics is entering the building. <laughs> I mean, I'm, whatever we're talking about, politics, I'm going to make it about metaphysics. We're talking about sports, I'm going to make it about metaphysics. I bring some sort of a metaphysical approach to whatever conversation I'm a part of. I mean, not always, but, you know, just, people, people know. Universal Angel Mind at Astra opening dialogue is portraying the mind state of the initiate. Now, if you watch this movie, which I hope you have, you will see that it's there's a lot of narration in this movie. And the narration is not just, you know, thrown in there willy-nilly. It is for a purpose. Now, this op there's the opening dialogue and there's the ending dialogue. And they are very similar. Look, he talks about, you know, I am calm, steady, I slept well, 8.2 hours, no bad dreams. I mean, let's go. Let's go to the. Let's go to the very end. Final monologue: the mind state of the adept. I am steady, calm. I slept well. No bad dreams. Notice there aren't any numbers on how long he slept. There are numbers in the beginning. That's very uh, purposeful. What are those numbers? Like I said, you add the numbers up so you get down to one digit. Eight point two hours. 
Eight plus two is 10. 10 equals a new level of learning individuality. So he's about to, the whole journey is about traversing within. You've lived a whole life, you know who you are, but now as you go within and discover your soul and your spirit and your real self, your true self, that's a whole new level of learning of who you are as an individual. That's what this is all about. This is the mind state of that you have to be in to be an initiate. You have to be someone who's calm, who's steady. You know, you're sleeping well. You know what I mean? You're, you're ready for the new journey of, of individuality. No bad dreams. If you're someone who's watched any of my TikTok videos, you probably saw a lot of astral projection uh, videos because when I've made one video, I had a billion questions, people talking about, you know, demons and it's going to open up, you know, your demons. Some people said demons are waiting for you. Some people said, you know, it's going to open up access to demons and all this other stuff. That's because if you aren't someone who has taken care of your own demons, your own inner demons, if you haven't worked with your dreams enough to where you do not have any nightmares. I mean, I, I used to have nightmares, night terrors, bam. <laughs> like I'm talking being a grown man, 25 years old, 24 years old, and I have a night terror so bad I don't go back to sleep. I stay up the rest of the night. I go to work the next day. I get off work. I go play basketball, do whatever I do, and then don't go to sleep again the next night because I'm so terrified of what might be waiting for me. And I do that every day until my body cannot take it anymore. And I just naturally have to fall. I have no choice but to fall asleep. I mean, that type of level of night terrors and nightmares I used to have. Once I started writing down my dreams, that was at the same time that I started learning how to interpret dreams. So I was started writing down my dreams. I started interpreting my dreams. And I started applying the message all at the same time. From the very first day that I have done that, I have never had a nightmare. Now, I have had similar things come up that used to be nightmares, but it was no, the feeling and the, and the scaredness and the fear was no longer there. The, um, now I did do quite a bit of like meditating and different things and energy exercises and practices and disciplines and breathing exercises and disciplines and things before I started working with dreams like this. So I did have kind of a little bit of leg up, but working with your dreams like this, writing them down every night, interpreting them and applying the message into your life will eliminate nightmares. You will have no bad dreams. That is the type of person you need to be in order to start going within. I am ready to go. See what I'm saying? He's, he's calm, steady, slept well. You know, he or she, this person, the initiate is calm, steady, slept well, ready to face the new lesson of who they are as an individual, does not have bad dreams. They have a good relationship with the subconscious mind. When they go within, there's not going to be anything waiting for them that they haven't faced yet. They are ready to go ready to do my job to the best of my abilities. I've cultivated a certain level of abilities and I'm going to progress forward with the best of concentration, willpower, visualization, breath work. I have you know, memory. I have cultivated and strengthened these mental tools, these abilities. I'm ready to go. I'm focused only on the essential to the exclusion of all else. Now, not many people are like me, but anybody from Cincinnati that used to know me, they will tell you, there was a point in time when I first started this journey where there literally was nothing else that mattered. I, mean, I, I no longer watch TV. I no longer listen to music, at least any lower vibrational music. I no longer, I, I mean, there was a point where I was only eating raw alkaline foods. Like, I mean, I wasn't not eating meat because it's some spiritual thing and didn't want to do this to animals or anything. I mean, whatever you're not want to do to animals, you're still doing the plants. But, uh, you know, if you don't want to eat plants, if you're just a breatharian, you're still doing the same to the gases. Yeah. But anyways, it was because it was what it was doing to my body. I wanted only only alkaline foods. And I, and I also, you know, read up on how, you know, you lose like 60, 70 percent of the nutrients in foods when you cook them. So, you know, I believe that and, uh, you know, not say that that's not true or anything, but at the time I believe that and went with it. So I just ate raw foods. So I was, you know, I was to the extreme. I'm a tourist. I take things to the extreme. So I'm very extremely. But everywhere I went, I was either, you know, practicing some sort of metaphysical practice or I was reading a book or I was watching some sort of video. Like I'd be a double at work and only have 30 minutes to get off and eat my food. I'd be sitting there for the 30 minutes. I'd be walking around, getting my food together and eating my food while all reading this book. 
You know what I mean? The, uh, the Book of Secrets. My favorite, still my favorite book to this day. By Osho, Book of Secrets. That's book you can use. Anyways, I was, I was focused on the essential to the exclusion of all else. Now, you don't have to be that extreme. But, you know, don't allow yourself to be distracted. You know what I mean? Don't, don't be, you know, playing 10 hours of video games all day. You know what I mean? Scrolling on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram, you know, all day long. You know? have to this has to be primary in order for you to go from an initiate to an adept you know i will only make pragmatic decisions that means i have i have a strong level of reasoning the power of the conscious mind is reasoning so i will only make pragmatic decisions i will not allow myself to be distracted i have a level of concentration i will not allow my mind to linger on that which is unimportant i have a strong level of willpower so concentration and willpower are right here i will willpower i will Willpower, I will, willpower. I will not rely on anyone or anything. I'll be independent. I will not be vulnerable to mistakes because mistakes are a matter of non-learning. You know what I mean? If you made a mistake, that just means you haven't learned. If you made a mistake and learned from it, it wasn't a mistake. It was a blessing. Be grateful for it. Resting BPM, 47, submit. BPM, it's all about your heart rate. This number is significant for what is at the heart of the matter, which is 47. Four plus seven is 11. 11, again, again is a level of mastery over, oh wait, not again, it's the first time. The 11, come, you'll notice 11 comes up in this movie uh, at least eight, nine times. <laughs> and so I don't, I don't count them up and go over it in here, but if you watch the movie, you probably saw the number 11. I mean, maybe not entirely because it wasn't directly like this, resting BPM, 47. For me, someone who pays attention to this from interpreting so many dreams and having so many dreams, I'll interpret my dream while I'm in a dream. And I, I noticed the number right away. You know, 47 is a big one. You know, 56 is a big for 11. You know, 58, 13, I would pay attention to 13 too. So 11 represents a level of mastery over the inner and the outer. 12 uh, represents the 12 major aspects of the self. And 13 is the, the most powerful number in the universe, I say, uh, because it is the level of mastery over those 12 major aspects of the self. But anyways, that's not what this is about. This is about 11, a level of mastery over the inner and the outer. This is duality. Let's go back real quick. Duality, the inner, subconscious, and the outer, conscious mind. Duality, the outer field of experience and the inner field of experience. The movie's all about uni unifying and aligning the conscious and subconscious minds, aligning the two of those so that they can move as one, and then you can then attune them to the superconscious mind. That's what the movie's all about. Right. That's what's at the heart of the matter here. Resting BPM. Last word, submit. Not submit to anyone outside of yourself, but submit to your inner self. Submit to the will of your real self. Submit to the will of your sub superconscious mind, like we talked about in week one. The purpose of the superconscious mind is to hold the blueprint for your existence, your sole purpose. If you don't know what your sole purpose is, connect and commune with your superconscious mind. It's there wait, waiting to tell you and share with you. It has the blueprint. Like I said before, you know, if you're an electrician and you're running wires in a building that you're building, and all of a sudden you come into a room and you know the plumber's got his pipes there, and you're like, well, wait a second, I thought my wires were supposed to go there i i kind of had a i kind of had a read on where i was going here but i i i don't remember now i need to figure out what i'm doing here why am i here what, what am i doing where am i going with these wires so you know that happens to us in life we feel like we have a read on where we're supposed to be going what we're supposed to be doing then all of a sudden things happen and we're like wait i thought i made the right choices how'd i get here you know what am i really doing here where am i going in life so you have to check with the blueprint. Okay, oh, okay, I checked the blueprint. Oh, that's why I'm over there. I need to go this way with things. You know, so that blueprint is held in superconscious mind, which is one of the benefits of getting there. So you have to submit to the will of your inner self, the will of your superconscious mind. The superconscious mind, it has the blueprint. It's not gonna lead you the wrong way. You know, if you have a dream where your grandma's driving or your grandpa's driving or, or your mom's driving, that means that you are submitting to the will of the superconscious mind. You're allowing it to be the driver in, in determining where you're going in life. A lot of people have that dream. All right, so here's more inner dialogue 
why you know and these, this is one of the scenes that show up this is the door into the uh to go outside in the antenna you know the number seven here we'll get to that but he's still talking you know that, that inner dialogue. i always wanted to be an astronaut for the future of mankind and all at least that's what i always told myself i see myself from the outside smile presents a side it's a performance with an eye on the exit always on the exit just don't touch me okay so we're talking about going and journeying within we're talking about shifting our consciousness from the physical body into the astral body and going within the self so i always wanted to be an astronaut i mean that's part of that purpose i have for always it's about time for some time now you know time in a dream is all about evolution of consciousness it's not you know uh Time in a dream is not linear, like a timeline like we talked about last week. It's vertical. This is 10 years. Wait, you got a question, anybody? 30 years, 40 years. If you got a question, you know, feel free to uh, interrupt me and let me know. Level one, level two, level three. Oh, shit, sure. these are terrible numbers. Level four. So, like I said before, you know, zero, the number zero represents power. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten brings you back to one, but it's of a higher level. So, it's like, you know, you have this level, this level, this level. Someone can, you know, be growing and they're 10 years old at one level, and they get to be 20 years old, and then they don't learn anymore in life. They still age. But now they're 40 and still acting like they're 16. <laughs> or we all know somebody who, you know, like me, when I was 24, 24 to 35, I, you know, took off. <laughs> 24 to 37 right now, took off, you know. So, so time is all about the evolution of your consciousness, the elevation, how high your consciousness is becoming, raising your consciousness, what time is all about. So he says here, I always wanted to be an astronaut so for some time there has been a focus on journeying within going within and and being one who knows the self for the future of mankind like i said interpreting this like we interpret dreams in dreams every person place or thing is an aspect of your own consciousness so all of mankind is all about your whole self i mean everything that you are for the future of it in order for you you you're want, wanting to go within for some time now for the elevation of your own consciousness as a whole at least that's what i always told myself you know speaking something invoking it you know when you talk you create a vibration i mean we all mm, everybody just hum at home real quick mm, see what part of your chest or your abdomen you feel that in or your or your brain you know in your head you know i mean a-U-N is the word of creation. I mean, the reason it's the word of creation is if you if you go, ah, uh, you'll feel the vibration of the base of your spine. Ooh, you'll feel it in the middle of your chest, the middle spine right there. Mm. You'll feel it at the pituitary gland where the, where the spine and the brain, just above where the spine and the brain meet. So if you transition those, ah, uh, mm, your, the vibration will start at the base of your spine, moving up your spine into the uh, to the uh, uh, crown of your head, to the brain. That will be stimulating your kundalini energy. Now, I'm not I'm not you know encouraging anyone to do this. I'm just letting you know you know the the secrets to the to the knowledge that's out there. That is the word of creation because your kundalini is your most powerful creative energy. So Aum, chanting that before your meditation will be powerful for you. Your manifestations will be more powerful. That is why concentration is important. Willpower is important. So that you can determine that the thoughts that you think throughout the day, if you come across a negative thought, you can realize that's a distraction, remove your attention to it, from, or remove your attention from it, place your attention on a thought you do want to manifest. And so you're, you're more giving more energy towards the things you do want to manifest, towards positive and productive thoughts, not negative thoughts that are associated with negative beliefs and personal limitations and things like that that are going to manifest things that you don't want, you know, unconscious manifestations. So you know, concentration is important when you start doing something like that. But the invocation is, is what is important. That's what I'm trying to convey here, the importance of invoking something. 
you know, speaking it out into existence. It's very real. I'm sure a lot of us have heard that speaking into existence. It's very real. The words you use are very real. You know, when you speak words, yes, they create a vibration, but what feels that vibration the most? What is impacted the most by that vibration? Your body, not anybody else, your body. If you cussing somebody out and spewing at them all these curse words, what is the thing that is cursed the worst? Your body. So I always told myself, I see myself from the outside. Now, a lot of what this is, is, is visual imagery because for a long time, and well, the majority of people that teach or have learned astral projection or you know lucid dreaming, going within, shifting the consciousness to the astral body and going within, traversing the inner levels, the majority of it is taught through using the visual sense to, to make that shift. Now, I suggest, and I, I've discovered that the and we've been taught that the most powerful way and the most effective way is to feel the way through it. There's a little bit of that in here, but it's it's much more prevalent to feel your way. Now, you want to use your image to know what to feel, you know, like there's a rope technique, you know, visualizing a rope falling from the ceiling, grabbing onto the rope and really feeling it as you pull yourself out of your body. That's the rope technique. So, but so there is a visual aspect to it. You also real the feeling is is an activator. But it's using your inner senses because you are where your attention is. So the more you give attention to your inner senses, the more you're going to be there. That's why it says right here, I see myself from my outside. Smile, present a side. So pick a side. If you're, you know, if you're doing this while you're laying in your bed, or if you're doing it from when you're sitting on a couch, pick a side. Are you gonna visualize yourself from the front? Are you going to visualize yourself from the side? You know, smile when you're doing it and see yourself smile. I mean, I don't suggest that part, but some people do it and it works for them. So you might be one of those people that that's how it works for you because everybody's different. So there's lots of different techniques for the right person, the right kind of mind, the right kind of personality. Something else might work. So yeah, maybe try smiling and then see yourself smile. You know, so put yourself, become, give yourself an objective perspective. See yourself sitting there. You know, it's a performance. It's an act. You know, this physical body is all in, an act you know what i mean we're just we're in we're only in here for a moment you know don't take things so serious you know, we're only here for a while and then, then we're gone and we come back as a different you know character but just like people who are actors you know when they're in front of the camera they convey and portray a role and then they step out of character that's why that line it's a performance is here it's just like you're stepping out of character step out of your own body the same way so watch my with my eye on the exit. So I perspective, being able to see, visualize the exit, always on the exit, leaving the body. Just don't touch me. That means that mean you know when you first shift. And anyone who's experienced this knows there is a projected body double. So when you're standing there looking back at yourself, you're also you're aware of that you're in your astral body looking at your physical body, but you also have awareness within your physical body. Now, it's hard to explain and it's hard to uh, conceive unless you've actually experienced it. You know, it's like, imagine being at, like if you're a set of twins, imagine those two twins are just one person living life and experiencing life through the two different bodies. That's what it's like. I mean, it's, it's so weird, but I mean, it's, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to explain because there's nothing else like it. <laughs> but you will know that. And so with that, if you want to remain in your astral body and moving forward, like I said, you are where your attention is. Keep your attention on the astral body. The more attention that you give to the physical body, the more attention with the emotion, you know, the more emotional you get, more excited you become, the more it's going to bring you to the physical body. So the more attention you have on the physical body, the more you're going to be drawn right back into the physical body. And then, and then you'll have to start all over. So that's what the just don't touch me means. So. This is where he first goes in the movie. If you watch the movie at Astra, this part of the scene when he's saying all of this is when he first goes into outer space. Not too deep. He, you know, he's just on this antenna at the very top of this antenna. But I mean, the antenna is still in outer space because it's so fucking tall. You know, so he goes through the door, the exit, because doorways represent the, like we talked about, um, I think it was uh, week one and week uh, last week. Every, every, these are the seven levels of the mind, right? So if we're going to from the physical to the emotional, every single one of these lines here, the dashed ones and the solid ones, there's a door that you're able to walk through. And there's a key to that door. 
this first part of this movie is all about the key to do this door right here. And so here he get, here he goes in the movie, walking through the door. Every single time he's going to walk through the door. Every single time he goes between one of these, he's going through some sort of door or hallway or getting into another vehicle. Right? Here's the door. And on the door is the number seven. Why? Because seven equals creative imagery, visualization. We already talked about it. We already went over that. Seven represents visualization. You have to visualize this. See it. Use your, use your inner sense to see it. Like that's what I pretty much just explained right here. All right, now the fall from the antenna. So in the movie, you know, he goes outside the antenna. Antenna is all about, you know, receiving the thoughts of the subconscious, the superconscious, inner communication, communication with the self. You know, what other part of the self other than the conscious physical mind, you know, the physical self and the conscious mind, what else is there receiving information from? Communication from soul and the spirit, superconscious and subconscious. <laughs> So, so I'm going on with the antenna and he's out there fixing it. Then there's a power surge. Now, later on, we find out the power surge is coming from deep within space. Like we said, outer space in movies and in dreams, outer space represents the inner space. So if it's coming from deep, it's coming from superconscious mind, you know, like a we talked about um, week two, or week one. Week one, superconscious mind. What is the duty of the superconscious mind? To provide life force energy to the soul and physical body. So shooting out energy out here. Anything, that, anything with the word spire has to do with energy, has to do with the breath, the energy that the breath provides. Spirare, spirit, comes from the word spirare, or, or spirare comes from the word spiritus, sorry, which means breath. It's all having to do with the energy coming from the superconscious mind. So we later on find out that it's uh, also coming from the father. You know, so like last, <laughs> like last time what I talked about, the duty of the mind is all about the masculine and the purpose is all about the receptive. You know, so if, you know, like I was saying earlier, the, the blueprint, holding the blue, the, the purpose of the superconscious mind is to hold that blueprint for your life, for your, um, your soul purpose. It's, that is receptive. You know, the, the, the story of the electrician looking for where it's going to put the electric lines, the foreman isn't bringing the blueprint to the electrician. Right? The blueprint is just sitting on the table, ready to receive the attention of anyone who goes to look at it. So it's receptive. Like women are naturally receptive. Men are naturally more aggressive. So, you know, like we talked about before, father or parents are your authority in life. Teachers are your authority in life. Bosses are your authority in life. Anytime a teacher, boss, or parent, or a doctor, or a priest, or something like that shows up in a dream, it's representing your super conscious mind, your inner authority, your spirit, which is the Five, five fifth dimensional body that uses the superconscious mind. Now, if it shows up as a man, then it's talking about the duty of the superconscious mind, the aggressive aspect. It's talking about a woman, if it's mom, grandma, if your boss is a woman, if your doctor's a woman, if your priest is a woman. It's about the purpose, the blueprints for your existence. This is all about the dad. We later find that out. So, of course, it's about the surge of energy. <laughs> all right. It's so funny to me how this stuff is. Here, I mean, even I've, I've watched this movie like eight times. I've, I when it first came out, and as soon as soon as as soon as this moment happened, because at first I was like, "Oh, okay, they on something," but as soon as this moment happened, a surge of energy, and then it turned out it was his father I said, from deep within space, Neptune. You know, you know I, I just started. I got up out of my chair. I started laughing. Oh, it was hilarious. But anyways, an explosion, expansion of consciousness. So when you very first, because this is the very beginning, he just now is going into outer space, not very deep, just a little bit. When you when you have this experience of experiencing and knowing yourself beyond your body. You know, if, you, if you're someone who's just all in the physical all the time, you're always in your conscious mind, and then all of a sudden you have an out-of-body experience, that's pretty much what's happening in this movie right now. He's having his first out-of-body experience, an awareness that you are more than your physical body. Oh, that's going to blow your mind. I mean, there's a reason that that term, you know, the universal language of mind is in the idioms of our language all the time. Blow your mind. You know, an explosion represents an expansion of consciousness, expansion of awareness. 
your awareness is just expanded. Your awareness of self is just expanded. You know I mean, when you un I understand that you're more than just your body is awareness of self and you're, and you're going to transform, you're going to change from that. You know, his partner, his little, you know, teammate die. You never even see the guy. You just, you know, all of a sudden he's like his, his coworker and you just watch him die all of a sudden. You know, it's going to evident the evidence of uh, reflecting that when you have this experience, this out of your first out of body experience, awareness of yourself outside of your body, it's going to expand your mind. It's going to, you're going to transform. You're going to change. And then falling represents coming back to the physical. So the whole time he's falling, he says, I'm trying to keep the tumble down so I don't black out. You know, like I say, whenever you are actually projecting and first starting out, don't go anywhere. You know what I mean? Just look around the room and come back in, pop back in. Because if you don't remain calm and centered, one, you're going to shoot back to your body if you get excited. But if you are gone too long and you lose awareness, you know, and you're not aware of the moment when you're re-entering your body and you lose awareness at some point between when you're gone and when you come back, you're going to lose the memory of the entire experience. You can be gone eight hours. You can remember the whole thing. You can be like, oh my God, I went and looked at my past lives. I, I went and watched three different past lives. I went to the Akashic Records and I, I discovered this. I mean, I went and met with, with some master teachers and they taught me these keys to, that I need right here. <laughs> and then you turn back around and come back and on the way back, you lose consciousness. You, you, you know, you go, go unconscious and kind of become, become aware and it turns, pretty much turns into a dream. If that happens, you, you could be aware of everything that you just did. You could have consciously caused it all to happen. And then in the moment you lose awareness, you'll forget the whole entire thing. You could have went and got some key master lessons from master teachers with them and your, or, or checked with your, you know, anything, all type of stuff. <laughs> you lose that awareness, man. You, you forget the whole thing. That's why I say start out a little bit, do a little bit and come right back. You know, we don't want to lose the memory of the experience Then write it down, document it. Document your success and slowly work on going further and further out. Like a kid growing up, you know what I mean? Kids a lot, not a, you know, a baby ain't allowed out of the sight of the mom. After a while though, okay, it can be on its own, you know, within the room, within the house, you know. Okay, after a while, you can kind of, you can go out into the yard without me being there. Uh, okay, after a while going, you can go over to a friend's house. Okay, you can spend the night at a friend's house. Oh, okay, you're old enough to live on your own. You know what I mean? So, uh, excuse me? Yeah, 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 go ahead. How do you make it constant where you can always do this? Uh, practice. 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 Growth, yes, practice. That's why. That's why. That's what I was uh, explaining. You know, slowly start out. Start out with just really small. And then as you practice, as you get better, you know, go into the other room. Go into the next room and come back. I mean, after about four or five times of just looking at your body, your body and coming back in, then, you know, explore the room a little bit. You know, maybe one or two times just going out and come back in. One or two times of exploring the room. Then, do you have a, um, like a mindset or like a routine you do to, to try and astral project? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a whole a whole game plan. I mean, I can get into all of that, um, you know, another time, but uh, I can't I can't really go because there's a lot more slides. There's like 20 more slides. But um, but as far as like what that routine is, yeah. You definitely want to, um, you know, have a routine because there there is a technique to it. And there's certain, um, you know, there's certain like not really like gateways, but like uh, checkpoints. Yeah, that's the word. There's certain checkpoints to get past. So, you know, it does take a strong level of concentration and willpower to do. That's why I, I harp on it so much because it's so vital, especially the concentration. Well, I mean, like getting out the concentration and willpower is vital, but you, I mean, you might as well, it, it, when you actually do get out, you, if you don't have the concentration of willpower, but you, you know, but you somehow do get out, you're it's like driving without a steering wheel because, you know, you are where your attention is. So wherever you put your attention, that's where you're going. <laughs> so if you don't have that level of concentration, as soon as you get out, you can get all excited. Oh, I'm gone. And then completely forget you were supposed to stay in the room. <laughs> and then you forget the experience. You know what I mean? Or, you know, you start to get scared. So you are where your attention is. You know, places and dreams are represent your state of mind. So if you're if you're you know calm in a calm state of mind and you go within, but as soon as you get it within, you get scared. You're going to you know you're in a scared state of mind. So you're going to go to a place that scares you. So the, there's it's very important to have concentration and things. But yeah, the, there's a certain technique that you would want to go through to get past these checkpoints. But the key is to just remain calm, remain still, 
until you're out. So I, I like to focus on my breath. That helps me to remain calm and it helps me to remain awake. <laughs> Sometimes I just fall asleep and wake up in a dream later, you're lucid, but already gone or not wake up at all. So you wake up in the morning. All right. So after this whole thing, he comes back to his body because falling is all about going back to the body. You know, you're, you're wherever you're dreaming at. If you're falling, you're coming to lower levels of awareness, lower levels of consciousness until you get back to the physical body that's what the falling was he, he left out of the body a little bit and came right back he did not take that he was just doing like this all right so in the briefing after that happens they they you know get major mcbride in a briefing with the generals and um how's that not on here i thought i put that on here Okay, I guess I didn't put it on there, but the, but the generals, um, you know, they they have they all have different stars, two stars, four stars, you know, but they're all five stars. The star itself is is five um, point. It's a five point star which represents the level of mastery over the five senses, utilizing five senses in order to get those mastery of the conscious mind. Uh, so uh, it comes five representing reasoning. Anyways, they tell him that um, the energy surge is coming from his father. So like we were just talking about, the aggressive action of the superconscious mind, the part feeding life force energy to the rest of the self. Anytime you feel inspired, anytime you feel inspired, it's it's the, that energy of the uh, superconscious mind filling your body to give you the energy you need to fulfill. The blueprint because whatever you're feeling inspired about that's a good indicator that that you're supposed to do that to follow your your soul's purpose i mean when you get inspired about something yeah we'll go and fulfill that and in order to fulfill that you're getting a surge of energy from your super conscious mind to be inspired to do this so that's what happens in the movie that inspiration comes which gives him the uh surge of energy to go deeper within and connect with itself because like we said the mindset of the initiate Mindset of the initiate is to go deeper. Always wanted to be an astronaut. I always wanted to connect with myself. I always wanted to unify my mind for the expansion of consciousness. Okay, in Neptune, he is, his dad is on Neptune. Now, like we talked about before last week, the firmament here. The uh, firmament being the structure of the mind. And the Bible talks about the upper waters and the lower waters. Water represents life experience. You can experience life. Down here below the firmament, that's where most of us are experiencing it. Uh, and then you have the upper waters, the experience up here. That's why the Neptune, so far out, so deep within space, Neptune is the Roman god of the sea. That's why they put him on Neptune. His dad, the, upper, uh, the superconscious mind are the upper waters, the waters and the lower waters, experience, life experience above the firmament. All right, and then the very first place he has to go is to the moon. They say, all right, go to the moon. And then from there, you'll take a rocket to go deeper into space. You know, moon represents superconscious awareness. In here, they're using it to spe most specifically reflect the emotional level. Every time he's on, because you know, that's the very first uh, thing you experience. So just like in space, when you first go out, the very first planet you come across is the moon. So that's kind of why they're using that. that. Then Colonel Pruitt right here. Colonel Pruitt is going to represent the ego, the identity. That's why he's always telling him stories about, you know, him and his, like his dad and where he came from and the mindset, uh, you know, when he was a kid and all that, you know, pretty much laying out his identity. In the movie, he's kind of given a little backstory to who Major McBride is, but that's because he's, for, he's giving him his identity, you know, but your ego, which is your identity, it's your motivating force. Now, in a lot of movies, you know, when you get carried away and you let the ego lead, lead the way, that's when, you know, it's like a super ego. and It's kind of, you know, quote unquote, a bad thing that people talk about. You know? So in most movies, the ego is usually depicted by something bad, like Jafar and Aladdin is the ego, you know, um, uh, uh, Agent Smith in The Matrix, you know, representing the ego. And so, but in this one, it's more the, because, because this story is all about the initiate. Becoming the adept, someone who's doing the right things, living a, a 
going about life in the right way in order to increase their own self-awareness through their soul growth and spiritual development. So that's someone who has a healthy relationship with the ego. So he has a very healthy relationship with this man throughout the whole movie. You know, there isn't anything bad about him. You know, he, he isn't secretly trying to, you know, take control, which is what most of the ego representation in movies is, is, is doing. They're wanting to secretly take control because the ego is, you know, wanting to take control. But once, once it realizes that, you know, you're in control and you command it to be in, behind you, pushing you forward, then it will be your motivating force, you know, pushing you forward, telling you, you know, giving you the momentum to keep going. Like in the Bible, the devil represents the ego. You know, it, Jesus was sitting there, you know, fasting and praying for, you know, 40 days or whatever. And the devil comes in, you know, tempts him and says, hey, do this thing, do this thing. You don't have to do this. Well, I mean, why didn't Jesus just, just destroy the devil right there? Why didn't he at least tell him to leave? He didn't even tell him to leave. He just said, get behind me. Get behind me, Satan. That's because that's where the ego belongs. The ego belongs behind you. You need to be out front leading the way. And the ego is supposed to be behind you, pushing you forward. You know, he says, you're going to be monitored constantly. Your mental, this is before they leave anywhere. So they've already left out once. And now they're going for a bigger journey, deep within the mind, to connect with the superconscious mind. He says, you're going to be monitored constantly. Your mental state, your emotional state. You have a direct connection with your subject. You know, because because he asks him, he, he starts asking him questions like, how do you feel? He's like, is this a psyche valve? He's like, no, but yes, you know, you're going to be monitored constantly. Your mental state, your emotional state, the whole entire time, your journey within your mental state is very important. Like I said, you know, whatever your state of mind is, that's where you're going to be going. So if you want to go up here, you know, you have to remain focused upon that. They, they point that out later in the movie. If you, you know, if you get distracted and you go way off over, you know, thinking about, you know, getting scared. And, and oh man, I'm opening myself up to demons. You know, that's what people been saying to me. If you get to focus in on that, then that's where you're, you know, that's your mind state and fear. You're going to go over there. You know, like I said earlier uh, about going and watching Green Lanterns. That's a 100% training video for astral projection. You know, what's the number one enemy there? Fear. So if you get involved in fear, that's where you're going to go. Your mind state, your constantly monitor of your mental states. That determines where you're going to go. Your emotional state. Because you have to remain calm. Because look, if we go through the physical and go deeper past the emotional into the astral realm, don't even worry about going anywhere up here. And we get excited. That's why like when people have a lucid dream, they get excited. Well, that excitement is an emotion. That emotion brings you, pulls you back to the emotional level. Well, if you have some momentum going down, once you get to the moment, emotional level, you're just going to be magnetically pulled back to your body. Boom, and you're going to wake up. That's why your emotional state is important because you get carried away with your emotions, you're going to wake up and leave. And then, you know, you were in the middle of something and now you're not. <laughs> and you have a direct connection with the subject, meaning through your breath. Breath is important because the breath is your direct connection. It's super fine. Like, like we said last week with the uh, creation story, it said the face of God is across, or uh, the breath of God is across the face of the waters, meaning. Your breath is your connection to the most high, connecting the you know, soul to the body, the spirit to the body, the superconscious, subconscious, conscious minds, unifying all of those. So the dialogue portraying the mind state prior to traveling within. So before they get on the rocket, he starts, you know, talking and doing this monologue and, and narration again. He says, so many times in my life, I've screwed up. I've talked when I should have listened. I have been harsh when I should have been tender. I made a promise to always be truthful. I've been trying to compartmentalize. It seems to me that that's how I approach my life. Resting BPM is 56. So I, so earlier, it was, what, 74? Oh, no, 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 it was still 56. Uh, no, 47, not 74. I knew that was too high. Resting BPM, 47. Now it's 56, but it's still 11. The heart of the matter is still 11. Didn't sleep much last night, but it shouldn't be a problem. I remain mission ready. So this first part is talking about, you know, I should have, I talked when I should have listened. You need to be receptive, listen, and relax. I've been harsh when I should have been tender. Relax. This is not a time to be talking. This is a time to be listening, going within, listening. This is not a time to be, you know, tense. And doing things actively this time to relax. You know, it's time to be honest with yourself because when you go within, there ain't nothing to hide. 
<laughs> there's nowhere to hide. So being, I've been trying to be uh, to compartmentalize, keep your mind organized, not be scattered in your thoughts. Be very direct, be very organized with your mind. That's how you have to approach things when you're going within. The heart of the matter is still 11, which is a level of mastery over the inner and the outer, duality. Because one plus one equals two. 11 is a master number, meaning there's some mastery there over the two, the duality. So didn't sleep much last night, but it shouldn't be a problem. Sleep is all about assimilation. I haven't really assimilated my recent life experiences too much, but that shouldn't be a problem because we're about to go in and be able, we can assimilate them from within instead of without. You know, instead of assimilating what's going on in my life while I'm awake, I can do it while I'm inside looking at the thoughts in my mind. I remain mission ready. I'm still focused on what we're here to do. So that's the mind state of the initiate before actually going within, being calm and relaxed, keeping the thoughts organized, remaining true to what's at the heart of the matter and keeping, keeping my eye on the mission. Then he gets into another vehicle. The vehicle represents a body. He's getting into the astral body. Right before he goes in, the lady asks him, or he's, she asks him, how do you feel? He says, yeah, it feels all right. And then she says, breathe. Your breath ties your soul to the body. So your breath is the way out. So put your attention on your breath and feel your way out. Don't just see your way out, but feel your way out. When you, so meaning, one thing to do when you when you are doing this, like I said earlier, you know, it said sit there and see, you know, okay. First, let me differentiate between when I say lucid dreaming, I'm talking about laying your body down to go to sleep and remaining conscious and aware and leaving your body that way. Not just like you're already dreaming and then you become awake, lucid. And when I'd say astral projection, I'm meaning you know, like you go sit down on a chair and leave your body then. Astral projection is a little easier than the wake-induced lucid dreaming, you know, laying down and going to sleep. But either way, when you're astral projecting, you want to sit down. I, I tend to mostly talk about lucid dreaming because that's what I do mostly versus astral projection. So that's, that's why. But not everyone is like me. Um, I do that mostly because I can rest on the understandings that I have that my soul had, has brought into this life on the work that I've done in past lives. So that's why it's easier for me, but it's all, probably a lot harder for other people. So the easier experience may be astral projection. So sit down, you know, like I said earlier, see yourself from the outside. So see your body from a certain side and really, and then feel being able to like feel that astral body see with your astral eyes, hear with your astral senses, and feel the astral body. Raise your hands up and look at your astral hands and feel them. You know, that feeling is what's going to really put you into that body because you are where your attention is. That feeling is going to place your attention within the astral body, and then it will pull. You know, the feeling goes first, and then it will pull the rest of your consciousness into that body, and boom, you're out. So, so in a way, through interpreting this, we are going to kind of go through some of the techniques. <laughs> All right. So, like we said, the oh, very oh, Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what's the main difference between an astral projection and a lucid dreaming? Uh, your perspective, that's it. This, it's the exact same experience. Whether, whether you're... So, so it's all just awareness. It's all about the level of awareness. If you are someone who doesn't dream, you have no awareness of yourself outside of your body. If you're someone who remembers your dreams, you have an awareness of a memory of when you were outside of your body. If you have a lucid dream that most people have where like you just wake up and the, you're like you're out in a dream then all of a sudden, wait a second, this is a dream. And you wake up and you're lucid and then you wake up and remember that, you have a little bit more awareness. If you, if you then remember when you're leaving your body and when you're coming back, that's astral projection. Now, if you do it at nighttime when you're about to go to sleep, that's still, you know, considered lucid dreaming, but it's all astral projection. Even when, even the people who aren't remembering any dreams at night at all, ever, they're still astrally projecting out of their bodies every, every single night because your, your consciousness doesn't sleep. Your soul doesn't need to sleep. You know, your soul is made up of your emotional body, your astral body, your mental body. This, the body that can use on this level, on these two levels, which are pretty much just one, which will 
kind of go over than this level. So you have um, an emotional body, an astral body, and a mental body, an etheric body also. Um, that's like kind of still really part of the physical body. It's like it's like the energetic fur of the physical body. But um, these make up your soul. And when people talk about their aura, being able to see someone's aura, you are seeing those energetic bodies, which are which are bigger than the physical body. So that's why it looks like an aura around the physical body when you're able to see that. So really the difference is just awareness and perspective uh, from that awareness. Right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So when he's on the... So right now in the story, we are at the point where he's leaving the physical, boom, going into the emotional. And what, going through that doorway, yes, excuse me, may I have a pillow and a blanket, please? Now that's the tools for sleeping, right? And sleep is all about assimilation, assimilating your life experiences, breaking your life experiences down, identifying what you have to learn from them. She says, sure, 125. Well, remember, what do we say? One plus two plus five equals eight. Eight is all about self-value, value. But, you know, everything's about the self, so but self-value. Everything's about the self. Value. What do you value? And so it's indicating that these tools for assimilating are highly valuable before you go within. Now, when you sleep, what's going on? You're dreaming. Now, you're dreaming. How do you understand what's going on when you dream? Dream interpretation, universal language of mind, everything we're learning right here in this class. The universal language of mind, the mind, the language that the mind speaks in. There is so much value, tremendous value that it has. And that is the tool for assimilation. And that is necessary. It's so valuable on this journey going within. Because if you don't understand how to interpret and identify what you're seeing within the astral plane, then you won't understand what it actually is. You know, if you go within and you see a horse running around. A horse represents willpower. But if you don't know that and, you know, you just pull out a gun and shoot the horse, oh, my God, that was so cool of an experience. <laughs> you just shot your willpower. And now when you wake up, that's like mental surgery. Now when you wake up, you will have transformed your willpower. And so you will need to be very, very mindful of what you do with your willpower moving forward. Will it transform into a higher form or will it transform into a lower form? You know what I mean, like, so when you're going, when you're going within, it is very important to know what you're looking at and identify what you're seeing to really understand what to do with it and what to do about it. That's why he says this here. That's why she says $125, you know, and even when you're watching it, you're sitting there thinking like, God damn, for a pillow and blanket, $125? Because you could have just said $8, it would have had the same message but it wouldn't have the impact of just how valuable that is. Like on the uh, live stream earlier, I said, and I mean it every time, I say it all the time. Man, learning this language is so valuable to me because I mean, and that's the main, that's one of the main reasons. Now I can go inside my dream and I, I don't just sit there and play around with stuff because I, I know that it's there for a reason. And if I do play around with it, I know what to do about it. But anyways, this has tremendous value, understanding how to assimilate uh, what you're experiencing especially when you're working with your emotions, your emotional level. And it'll help you understand what's going on in the emotional level, what's going on with your emotions. So you have to process your emotions. It's very important right now to process your emotions because, you know, you're going into the emotional level. It's the first place you're going in. Um, that's the first place you're going into, so you're going to have to actually process what's there. So whatever in your life you've been stuffing away and storing away, you know, uh, emotions you've been stuffing away, you're going to have to now face them. All right, and so this was this was pretty cool. I thought uh, when I noticed it, it was just like in the in the background. Um, it was a, a news update that was on the TV while he was going within, and at the very bottom, it said here uh, something about the very first journey that was made to the moon was in 1968. Well, one plus nine plus six plus eight equals 24. Two plus four equals six. Six is the power of the subconscious mind. And the moon represents subconscious awareness. I was like, oh, wow, look at this. And then, and the funniest part was that this really was the year when we went to the moon. Allegedly, I don't know. I didn't experience it. So some people say we did. 
No, it don't really matter to me. So I'll undo me. I don't worry about it. All right. So next part, when he gets there, he says that it's just like earth. Everything there is just like earth. That's to help you to understand that the emotional level is the earth element. Like we we're talking about earth element, uh, water element, fire element, and air element. So he says this so that we can have the indication that this is the emotional level. It is the earth element. You know, he mentions this to set the scene that everything happening at this point of the journey is going on within the emotional level of mind. You must clear the emotional level of any unproductive emotions. You must transform all parts of the self that do not align with your purpose. That's why they go on that journey <laughs> with, uh, uh, on the little carts and here in outcomes, these out of the darkness, out of the unawareness. I should have took a video and put that up here too. I can only pick one or the other. I've decided to pick that, this uh, mind triangle. But uh, if, if you remember from the movie, they're driving on them little moon crafts and then out of the darkness come these other moon crafts. So now, like I said, when you, any emotions that you've stuffed away and things, when you first go in, it's going to be there waiting for you. You were unaware of it before. You had it stuffed away. Now you're aware of it. Now you have to do something about it. It's going to try to change you. you know, that emotion that you've stuffed away, any emotion tied to like traumatic events or anything, any emotions tied to that, you got to face it. Or else, you know, like they shoot and kill the guy who was uh, driving and then he had to take control. So you have to, you know, be in control. You have to master the self or you will always be the slave. I say it all the time. So you have to transform these parts. And that's what they do. That's what he does. He kills all, you know, it's like five different cars eventually, four different, four or five different cars. And it kills all of them. But on the way back in, they say, Colonel Bruin, Colonel, we're picking up an irregular heartbeat. So you have to let go of the attachment of the ego in order to go deeper. Now, the ego can go along with you and the emotional because it's so much tied to you. You know, the emotions are so close. The emotional level is so close to the physical. The emotional level is so close. But to go any deeper, you have to let go of the ego, which is all about your physical identity. When you're, when you're born, uh, when you're born every lifetime, I mean, before that lifetime, none of this down here exists. This isn't here yet. I mean, in between, your, after your last life, you have your soul and your spirit. And then when you're born, boom, you have a new physical body with a new conscious mind and a new ego. And, it, and, the, and the more older that you get, the more these three things develop. So if you go within, you have to let go of the attachment of the ego in order to go any deeper. That's what that part's about. After you've, tra you know, you've, you've transformed yourself so much, first, you know, the one guy, the little co-worker died. Now you've actually consciously caused someone to die. You, you're consciously killing off these unproductive parts of yourself that are trying to steal from, you know, because they were stealing, they were pirates. So stealing the value. So, you know, ways in which you talk down on yourself, you know, ways in which you don't believe in yourself. You know, that's, that's the parts that need to change. That's the parts that you need to transform. So, uh, <laughs> when when he does realize that um, Colonel Pruitt can't go any further, Brad Pitt, Colonel Major McBride, everybody calls him Major, Major, anyways, um, <laughs> Major McBride is uh, he says he's supposed to be my security blanket. Why does he still do it? Your attachment to your ego has provided you security in knowing who you are. There's security in that. You know, you you lived your whole life knowing yourself as 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 Roy here, you know what I mean? Knowing yourself as this identity, you know, this person, this entity, this identity, you understood and known it to be that. And so, you know, there's there's a level of security in that versus when you let go of that identity, that's, you know, you don't have, you're not so secure. There isn't such a strong foundation because then you don't know yourself. But you have to do that because if you want to know who you are beyond this physical, you know, the rest of the self, because you're more than all of this, then, you know, like, you're, you're really, really, you're the I am, the real self beyond this, you know, mind, 
which is a tool for experiencing, beyond the superconscious mind, subconscious mind, conscious mind, beyond the spirit, the soul, and the body, beyond those, because those are just vehicles, just like the conscious, you know, just like the physical body is a vehicle in this 3D reality, the soul is a vehicle in the 4D. I mean, the spirit is just a vehicle in the 5D. Now, each is less and less dense because it's of higher and higher vibrations, but beyond all of those is your consciousness, your true self, your I am, that uses those bodies to experience life, water, within these parts of the superconscious, subconscious, and conscious minds. So if you want to go deeper and know yourself in a deeper way, you have to let go of the identity you have of the physical body. You have to let it go. That's what's now at the heart of the matter. That's why it's an irregular heartbeat. As you go deeper, you'll find out that the attachment here is irregular. It's abnormal. You shouldn't actually be identifying yourself as only a body. It's kind of weird. <laughs> I remember a time where I thought that this was way of thinking was weird. Just the other day, I had somebody comment like, these astral experiences are just imaginings. You're only imagining things within your brain. That's all that's happening. And I was like, man, that sounds so weird. <laughs> like, I don't even know how to respond to this guy. It's so weird. But anyways, um, where did I leave off here? But you must let this go in order to, for yourself to, or in order for your self identity to transform. Exactly. Your awareness of what the ego truly is will increase at this point in ego transformation. So it's going to go through a transformation which you'll see he goes to surgery. I mean, you won't see it. You just hear about it. Your ego is your motivating force. It is what pushes you further. That's why at the very last scene, when you see him, he's telling him, go, you have to go, Roy, go. He's pushing him forward. No, don't, don't worry about me. I mean, don't remain attached to me. Let go and go. Keep going deeper. Keep going forward. Pushing yourself further. And there's a later, there's another ego person that comes in because, you know, as we do go deeper, you do, you know, you have a new identity. I have a new identity as someone who does understand and know myself in a way larger degree than I used to and the majority of people around me. That's a new level of ego that I then also have to then work with and, and continue to transform, continue to make sure that I'm in control. I don't get carried away of, oh man, look at all this praise I'm getting. Oh man, look at all these likes I'm getting. Oh man, look at all these views I'm getting. And who cares? That is of no importance. I remain calm and focused on the mission at hand. <laughs> but I could let that get to me. You know what I mean? And, and it would get carried away. But it's, but you'll see that later. There's a new level of uh, when he gets to Mars and those those other people that are there trying to tell him what to do with things. Um, that's a new level of you, what it transforms into. But anyways, now he's left uh, Mars and he's going into a new vehicle to reach a new level. I mean, moon. He's left the moon uh, and he's hopped onto a new uh, spaceship. Now he's going into, boom, the astral. The new vehicle, you are where your attention is. Like I said earlier, when you asked that question, Eric, you are where your attention is. You know, is concentration is so vital of a skill. Being able to control your attention will allow you to control where you are at within the astral. It's like having a steering wheel. So it shows us while he's on this, on this uh, spaceship, he goes back and starts watching this video about his dad. Okay, let me remain focused on where I'm going. Keep my attention on where I'm wanting to go so that I can then move there because the fourth dimension is time. So there is no time that needs to pass in order to travel. You'll just go right there. So you must remain focused on where you're wanting to go. You must create a visualized image in your mind to get direct, to get direct on where you're wanting to go. And so you, that's why you see the number set, like uh, I think right behind his head, when, uh, when he was sitting right before he walked to the back of the spacecraft to look at this video, right behind his head was a long sequence of numbers. I, I think I took a picture of it. I, I had so many of these things to make, I had to pick and choose some to not put in it. But there was a number seven behind him, which is all about uh, visualization, visualizing this. You're going to feel seeing it within your mind, and you're going to go there. So now, Vespa 9, before they make it, to uh, before they get into the lower astral, they come across a, a little space station that's you know has a mayday call. So that's all with this. So in order to really go deeper past the emotional level, 
you have to not only let go of the ego, but you have to transform the monkey mind. I mean, the, 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 you know, scattered erratic part of your mind, you have to let go of the primal part of your mind and be in conscious control. I said, if you do not master your mind, you will always be a slave. If you are not the master of your mind, then you are slave to the person who is the master of your mind. Meaning, if you do not control what you pro how you program your mind, then you'll be a slave to the programmings. You know, the person who is pro who is programming your mind. You know, the, usually from when we were a child, the environment, the people, in the in the uh, states of mind and beliefs of the people who you know taught us when we were growing up, or TV, you know, watching television programs. You know, they program you for real. The more you watch them, the stronger the programming. But anyways, you have to transform this monkey mind. So when they get to this Vespa, they go in, and, and Vespa uh, it was the goddess of the hearth, which is the home, and your home. It's all about your regular conscious state. So whenever you have a dream about your home, your house, or a former home, it's talking about like your just your everyday consciousness. You know, your everyday, your regular state of mind. You know, like yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a like for me, it's always talking about like uh, uh, just some kind of go with the flow kind of state of mind. Because that's my regular state of mind, just kind of going with the flow, bringing joy and making jokes and things like that. But sometimes I can be angry. Sometimes I can be sad. You know, sometimes I can be quiet and reserved, contemplative, you know, so these are different states of mind, but my regular state of mind is, you know, kind of a, a go with the flow kind of thing. So it's this Vespa 9 is talking about your regular state of mind and it's Vespa 9 because it's come to a level of completion. So we're in, we need to transform into a new level of, of a regular state of mind, a regular conscious state it needs to have a new level. In order to get there, we have to transform the monkey mind. So in order to go deeper and reach the astral level with conscious awareness, you must com complete a level of learning within your home, regular conscious state. To do this, you must transform your monkey mind. This is done by strengthening your concentration and willpower. Because like I said, if you are not in control of your mind, then when you go deeper, you're, you're going to not be in control of where you're going and what you're experiencing. And I don't know why you would want to go within and not be in control of where you go. Because there are infinite numbers of places you can go. And if you aren't in control, and oh man, I don't know what you're doing. Why are, why are you here? <laughs> so that's what is needed to go deeper. So he can't go deeper in space until he, you know, kills that monkey because he tries to go deeper. He tries to tell them, no, pass this place up. And they even say, they even say to him, because he's he has is a higher rank than everybody on the ship. They say, no, we can't go, we have to, you know, help this mayday call. This is what we're doing. And they say to him, now you are within your right to take command of this ship. And you'll have to tell us your objective for doing so. He says, all right, fine. We'll go answer the Mayday call. So, you know, he, he tries to go deeper. It's like, no, you ain't going deeper unless you really force your way deeper. Yeah, sure, you can go, but that's on you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Do you even have an objective for doing that? Like, no, do this first. Face the monkey mind, build your concentration and your willpower in order to be able to traverse deeper. And after he does, or he fully, you know, after he does do that, and before he actually fully leaves the emotional level and gets to the lower astral level, he has to process his emotions. You know, to move deeper in the emotional, in, in, uh, then the emotional level, we must assess and process the emotions and the trauma that is at the root of some of these emotions. So that's why in the dialogue that he's using, he's you know, he's doing his psyche valve thing. And he says, just as no, I'm calm, I'm steady, I'm ready to go. Well, what happened? Well, we had to, you know, kill this monkey. And that's that. That was the experience. And things like, no, you got to go deeper. It's like, okay, well, you know, I, there was a rage in this monkey. I understand that rage. I've seen that rage with my father. And then he starts talking about the rage and like, you know, a traumatic experience of his, when he was a kid and how he has this rage because his dad left him, you know, when he was a kid. Dad left him when he was a kid and was gone for 30 years, his whole life out in space. You know what I mean? So it was like a traumatic thing for him leaving. So he's processing the emotions. So there's a level of experience that has nothing to do with his dad, the monkey on the ship. And he's through processing that, he can understand the emotions that were tied to it. And then he takes them deeper and gets to the root of it. So he's digging out the root. Of this, so so that's why I said, if you want to go deeper and move past the emotional level, 
You have to process all of the emotions that are there. You have to dig deep and do the work. I mean, you can't just bypass it. You can't just, you know, get past it. You have to do the work. Nobody else can do it for you. You have to do the work. So they finally get to uh, Ursa 9. Um, and we'll talk about what Ursa means uh, in 9 here in a minute on, on Mars, which is the lower, the, the astral, the astral plane is Mars. The lower and the upper, we'll, we'll, we'll see the delineation here in a minute. But in landing, he had to then take command of the ship. The other guy was flying, and then he took command of the ship. And at the end, he was like, don't worry, I'm not going to tell everybody that I took, you froze up and I took command. And why was that? Because things were kind of tumultuous a little bit because, you know, they just left the emotional level. So it's not so calm and steady no more. You know what I mean? He just, he just got done processing all this trauma that's been, you know, stored up since he was a kid. So <laughs> shit ain't so level anymore. You know, it's, he's off axis, he's off kilter. So he has to take control. That's why you have to, you know, control, you know, transform the monkey mind and have concentration. You have to take control and remain balanced. You have to remain calm because if he doesn't remain calm, then he'll be shot, you know, back to the body. You must at all times remain in control and balance. If you are not the master of your mind, then you will always be the slave. So we are on, oh, uh, I kind of messed these up, I think. I spent like seven hours doing these. This was also supposed to be a part of this. So Ursa, lower astral water element. Um, so, Lower app, like we said, earth, water, fire, air. We talked about it in week one. We talked about it last week. And so now we're also seeing it in this movie. Put it in this movie for us. So Ursa, oh man, did I not, hold on. Oh man, did I just miss that whole thing? Okay, I guess I did. I don't think I made that slide. Oh, geez. I'm going to have to put this back in. Oh, well. Anyways, Ursa, I'm going to tell you about it. Ursa is the goddess of dew, which is water. And so when he first gets there, it's the Ursa, um, Ursa, Ursa 9 station. So Ursa is the Greek goddess or Roman goddess of the dew, which is, which is water. You know, the water drops on, on the grass in the morning. So that's how they're telling you that this is the lower astral, which is uh, associated with the water element. So when he first gets there, he goes into a room and gets checked in. And then he goes into a hallway. Hallways represent accesses into different levels of mind. Um, that's why, or like tunnels also. That's why like people say, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's, that's you know, going through that void. Sort of like level by put back this on. It's supposed to be moving here. Going through that void, that tunnel, hallway, this hallway, he's going through this hallway. He's barely in the lower astral. Most of the lower astral is talked about by um, like entering into it. It's mostly talking about it by entering into it. Once you actually get there, boom, the story's moving along into the upper astral. So, oh yeah, also real quick. Now we've experienced, now we're in the upper astral. We've already experienced more than 50% of the subconscious mind. So now we can say we actually know what the subconscious mind is. We've gone more than 50% deep into it. So that's why women represent subconscious aspect. I'm Helena or Helen Lantos, director of operations here, a, a woman. So you can identify the subconscious mind now. Now you've gone more than 50%, 50% of it. So after entering Ursa base, Major McBride travels through a hallway. So that's signifying that even though he just got here to the lower astral, boom, we're already moving into the upper astral. And they're both pretty much the same lower and upper astral is still the astral. That's why it's all on um, Mars. But um, so hallways, access, deep levels, mind, woman, women, subconscious aspects between the upper and lower astral is the center of the subconscious mind. Now having awareness of the mind, more than 50% of the subconscious mind can be identified. So Mars is the red planet ruled by Aries, a fire sign. Now we have the fire of the element of the upper astral. That's why here on, uh, on this uh, planet, that's why they chose Mars. So at this point, it is vital. So once you're someone who is you know, going deeper and deeper, like I said, you start off in the room, 
then go a little deeper, then actually leave the physical 3D and start to move into the astral, move deeper into the mind. Now first, work on your emotions, process your emotions. Now, as an initiate, at some point, and this is the point, you have to go deep, you have to start a, a, a meditation practice, you have to start some sort of still mind meditation. That's why he's in this soundproof room. A still mind meditation is where you remove all of your attention from your outer senses, including, you know, your thoughts, your mind, um, you know, so you still the mind, but you remove your attention from your senses of sound, your taste, feeling, sight, all of that. You know, when, when, uh, when I first moved to Louisville nine years ago, I lived in a place where uh, I met, or, well, it was on, it was on a very busy street. And um, the window, like where I chose to meditate, there was like this little ducked out space, like a little cubby hole kind of thing in the room that was right under a window. And that's where I chose to meditate. But it just happened to be the very front of the house, which was right next to this busy uh, street, very, very busy street. It wasn't like just like a regular street with four lanes. <laughs> and it, it was wild to me that um, I could just go there and meditate and I'd be, you know, going within completely and then. It wasn't until I brought my attention to my back to my body, took a deep breath and exhaled and opened my eyes. Boom, I could hear the busy street all of a sudden again. I never heard it the whole time I was meditating because I was removing my attention from the outside senses. So that's what this is representing. He's in this little room. And that's, that's kind of what it feels like. You know, it feels like you're just like in a room observing everything around you. But anyways, and then, <laughs> so it's funny because when I watched this movie, because that's also how I practiced meditation at that time was I would spend like my first 10 minutes praying and then I would spend the next 15 minutes listening. And that's exactly what's going on here. Um, you know, he's giving this message, this radio communication, radios represent communicating with the self. It's going to out to his father, the super conscious mind. And then they're waiting for a response. Then he comes back and does it. Have you, have you heard back from my father? They didn't tell him. Then, you know, and these people are like the, the new ego. Um, and he, they have to do another radio transmission. Sends out the message. He asks again, did you hear from my father? And then they come in. They say, oh, you have to go back to the body. You, know, you have to go back to earth. He's like, you know, fuck no. I ain't going back to earth. I'm going deeper. And then he has to like, uh, you know, get back onto the ship. But at this, But essentially at this point, it is vital to begin incorporating a still mind meditation as well as a proper prayer of both expressing your thoughts and uh, your thoughts dedicated to the most high, your real self and a super conscious mind, as well as time spent expectantly listening. So that's what I mean when I, when I, when you pray, give space and time to listen for a response. You have a still mind meditation, and this might not be where you're at right now, you know, but after you do the work of your emotions, because, you know, there's really no it's really not going to be much success if you do this still mind meditation as far as receiving from the super crunch mind if you haven't processed all of these emotions that are still sitting in here. Your emotions are all junked up. There's a whole bunch of just gunk blocking the emotional emotion all up in your emotions. And you have uh, you know, some some thoughts coming from the super conscious mind trying to come down, and it's gonna get blocked. I mean, me through uh some, you know. Uh, through the Akashic Records, I've come to find out and be aware of my uh, part of my Dharma, you know, or part of my healing healing quality, like being people being around me, just my natural effect on them, just being my own self when I'm centered within myself. I'm 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 able to call carve pathways through the chitta, which is the mind substance. So that's like uh, all of a sudden, all this is going on. All of a sudden, there's like it's like a pathway is carved within their mind. Sometimes through being around me. So now this pathway is there. And now these thoughts that have been trying to come through from the subconscious and superconscious can finally get through. It just happened to my friend Dave the other day. We were playing golf. In the middle of golf, I just randomly asked him a question. It wasn't nothing to me. I mean, I just, I, I thought that's where the conversation was going kind of thing. Um, but for him, like he wasn't the same the whole rest of the day. And he's probably still not the same today. He's probably still living in the just like two days ago, but, uh, but, and, and the things that he was thinking about, he told me, I was like, dude, those aren't, you know, that isn't, has nothing to do with what I said. That just, what I said just allowed you to shift your mind and pause your, you know, still your mind just enough to where those thoughts can come through. 
because if you're if you're if your mind is racing you know and you're having all these thoughts all day long then you can't get those thoughts to come through there's no space there you know that's why the conscious mind is aggressive subconscious mind is receptive you know that aggressive conscious mind is just blocking the way bullying it up you know being like a bull bulldozing its way through making sure that those thoughts are what's going on you know so like um it, it's like if I called you on the phone, I had something to tell you, but it's, it's, or, or, you know, if you, if you called me on the phone, you had something to tell me, but as soon as I, Hey, hello. Hey, what's going on, man? How you been? I ain't heard from you in forever. No, nah, I'm just, you know what I'm doing? I'm over here sitting here doing this a uh, little live, but uh, you know, I seen you call. So I figured it must've been important. So I just wanted to uh, uh, answer and see what you wanted. So, you know, I, I guess I hope you're doing okay. And family's all doing okay. I'm glad you called. Cause I was wanting to tell you something, but uh, I'm doing this live. Let me talk to you later. All right. Bye. I never gave the person on the other line any chance to give get a thought in. You know what I mean? So if that's how your conscious mind is going, there's no space there to receive any higher thoughts. So you have to create space in the mind. That's why concentration is so vital. You have to, and you know, working with your emotions allows you to then create space in order to receive these higher thoughts. So listening. All right. If you remain calm while in the astral, your emotions will pull you back to your body. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so when they were telling him, um, hey, you got to go back to, to the to Earth, he said, he says, no, I'm fine. They're trying to tell him. And then the one guy says, hey, uh, your BPM is a lot higher than normal. You might want to go through a psyche value. You're, uh, some, you know, I think he says something. How are you feeling? Your emotions, your feelings. And so if, he, if you allow yourself to continue to get excited, you're, it's a reminder that if you get excited, it's going to pull, you know, yeah, he's up, he's up here right now. You know, you're right here right now. But if you start to get emotional about things, you know, as you discover more about yourself, because right here in the middle is the Akashic Records. So if you're, while you're in here, you're looking at some past life stuff and you start getting emotional about it. It's going to, you know, you're, you're going to pull you to the emotional level. Well, if you start this momentum instead of this upward momentum, you start this downward momentum, where's the next place to go? Back to the physical, back to the body. You're going to wake up. I'm going to be able to go deeper. And as you expand so far, you know, you're, I mean, cause this isn't just like all on one journey, you know, this is like, as you're going through life and you're expanding consciousness, like I said, time is not linear. It's about the elevation of consciousness, how, how high you're raising your consciousness. And as you do that, you begin to like, see now he's in this room with these walls all around him. Yeah. The walls like project different images, you know, this augmented reality, but but it's really to represent limitations. The walls represent limitations. So the further, the more you expand, the more you become aware of your own limitations, beliefs and things that you have in your mind that are limiting you on what you can experience. In order to get past that, you have to become motivated to get past that. That's why the girl comes in and starts talking to him about things and, and motivates him to, to go, you know, hey, you know, they're, they're sending a nuclear bomb to your dad if they don't hear no message back. You know, it motivates him on what, where he's desiring to go and why he needs to get there. So you're wanting to connect your super conscious mind, your soul, subconscious mind, your, and your conscious mind. You want to unify your physical body, your soul, and your spirit. Remain focused on that and remain why and, and keep your attention on why you want to experience that, why you want that to happen and occur and be true. So that motivation allows you to expand beyond those limitations. The more your consciousness expands, the more you become aware of your personal limitations. You must put forth the necessary effort to do whatever you must in order to break through and expand beyond it. That's what that girl does. She, you know, she breaks him out, lets him get back onto the ship. So being back on the ship, now, <laughs> now we're going to go deeper to the mental level. When he gets back on the ship, well, the one people didn't want him to, to go further. And so there's other aspects of yourself that aren't going to be in alignment with that mission. You know, there's old, old ways of being that, you know, maybe not so productive or you know, not being responsible or not being dependent, you know, being dependent on other people or, um, you know, just, just whatever parts of yourself that aren't in alignment with, you know, evolving and growing and trans, you know, you have to transform those. You have to change them. So he gets on there and he, and he even tells them, like, look, y'all, I'm, I'm not trying to do this. I don't want to do this. But they force the issue. You know, it's just like uh, in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, I, I don't know if how many of you are aware of it, but 
Bhagavad Gita is about this young prince Arjuna, who his dad owns the kingdom and his dad's brother, his uncle, and his, all of his uncle's family wants to take over control of the kingdom. But, you know, so there's this war going on. Arjuna's sitting there saying, you know, he's like, this is my family, you know, this is the parts of myself that I'm familiar with. I don't want to have to fight them. I don't want to have to change them and transform them. I don't, I'm familiar with, you know, only doing just enough. I'm familiar with being dependent on other people to a degree. You know, I'm familiar with, you know, stuffing away my emotions and not processing them. That's what's familiar to me. But it is, but is it unproductive? Is, is it what's best for the kingdom? Is it what's best for your whole self? You know, no. So that's why, you know, Krishna, who's like the embodiment of God talking to Arjuna, he tells him, Arjuna, you must pick up your bow and fight. You must transform these parts of yourself. If you if you don't fight and you allow them to take control, is that going to be good for the kingdom? The people who are under your family's ruling, you know, the people who are you're responsible for, are they are they going? Is it in their best interest for you to let them take over? You know, these unproductive parts of yourself, you got to transform them. You got to change them. Through this process, bringing you limitations, you must go through even more self transformation. Transforming the parts of yourself that do not align with your soul growth and spiritual development. So we also see a progression here in the very beginning on the antenna. The guy dies on his own. Like he do the explosion. Through it, we don't really know if he dies. He just has surgery. And then Major McBride has to kill the monkey. He kills an animal. Now he actually kills people. So there's a progression here. Like you're causing this change. But it's, it's very important to identify what parts of the self he's choosing to change. You know, it was in self-defense anyways. <laughs> so, you know, he's, he's choosing to change these parts of himself. I remember when I very first started meditating and working on my dreams and stuff and, and concentration and, and willpower every day. Like I, I had, you know, I would meditate. Uh, it got to the point where I was doing 45 minute meditation, 30 minute concentration, 30 minute visualization, uh, 10 to 15 minute energy, uh, life force energy exercise. Um, uh, memory exercise every day, reading 30 minutes a day at minimum. And, um, um, oh yeah, 30, 30 uh, minute um, astral projection exercise every single day. It was like four hours of spiritual discipline every single day. And so before then, you know, when it very first, when I very first started being very disciplined like that, I had all types of dreams of me, like running through the city, just like, like, some action hero movie just killing off all these drug cartel guys or like the next night i'd be in the jungle running through the jungle like i'm john rambo just killing hundreds of guys that are all like part of the cartel or something i mean there was always like you know parts of myself that were unproductive that weren't doing anything for me they were actually working against me so i was transforming those parts of myself now you know i, I go back to cincinnati people people all the time will tell my friends they're like man these people be seeing your posts and stuff. They think you're a fraud. They think you're faking it, you know, <laughs> because they don't, they, I've completely transformed. I'm a totally different person. They still view me as that same person I used to be. You know, now also I'll tell people that know me now, you know, for, for years, people know me for like four or five years. I'll tell them a story from, you know, just 10 years ago, 11, 12 years ago. And they'll laugh. They think, you know, they think I'm making it up or I'm just being funny because I'm always making jokes. And stuff. <laughs> so they won't believe it at all. They won't believe it at all because it's absolutely nothing like who I am because I've transformed those parts of myself. Not only did I do it just with dreams, I've, you know, lucid dreamed and looked like, okay, I'm in the astral plane. This person represents this part of myself. Okay, I'm changing this right now. Boom, killed it. And then I woke up, was like, okay, I've changed this part of myself. Let me make sure I no longer am like that so I can help facilitate, you know, like this, like when you have surgery and you extract, you know, if, if you have, uh, uh, you know, a tumor on your stomach and you have surgery to pull that out, you're not going to just go start weightlifting and playing basketball the next day. You know, you're going to make sure you do the necessary things. Don't continue to do some things and do the necessary things to facilitate the healing. So I do the same thing when I extracted you know, those different parts of myself. You know, I'm specifically talking about a specific dream experience that I had at a specific time. But I woke up and did that. So anyways, in this part right here where he kills him, you know, uh, the way that they die is all of the... Uh, oxygen is left out of the room, or, or no, a fire extinguisher is let out. So there isn't any more oxygen left. So he yells out, Yoshida, that's this guy, Yoshida, oxygen, Yoshida, oxygen. That's to help you to identify that, you know, there isn't a new base. Like first we were at the moon, then we were at uh, the base on Mars, and then we were at the other part of Mars after the hallway. 
So, so it's there's physical spaces to represent these different levels. The Yoshida oxygen is to help you to identify that this is now in the mental level. And then that's why the whole time he's, you know, there on the plane by himself, because he's also going for like 187 days or something, he has to travel by himself. And he's the whole time, there's just like this long sequence of all of these thoughts, him remembering these memories of all these thoughts that have gotten him to where he's at today. You know, so the Yoshida oxygen air, uh, also one of the images within it is, you know, this random little kid sitting in some wind on a windy day. Wind represents uh, uh, your thoughts. And wind also represents air. So, and then you have the uh, wind turbines, also wind, which represents, which is represented by thoughts, but also wind, air. So, uh, you can tell that we are, that's them indicating for you that we are now, even though we haven't landed anywhere else, we are now in the mental level, your thoughts, the mental level, the element of air, wind. Wind represents thoughts. So, this is to convey the transition into the mental level. Of, air element this is why major mcbride continues to reflect on all the thoughts that brought him to this point notice one of the flashback thoughts is windy with wind turbine in the background to further convey this as the mental level so we're in the mental level now that is also why after being on this vehicle he has to get into a different vehicle to go there so that way they can indicate that yes we are in the um, mental level but we then have to have a different vehicle to traverse into the fifth dimension of the causal level. Okay, and so thought is cause. That's why he's also going over all of these thoughts that have caused him to get to where he's at on this journey. So now we're in the causal level. Since the current ship is being used to convey, oh, sorry, sorry. Being used to convey the mental level, we must enter a new vehicle in order to traverse into the next level of mind, the causal level of the superconscious mind. That's why this quote, he says it while he's going through. In the end, the son suffers the sins of the father. The father is a superconscious mind, meaning that everything that the son experiences is caused by the actions of the father. So the father representing superconscious mind, when you go into the superconscious mind, the very first level is the causal level. You'll be able to see what's causing these other things to happen. Now, again, to reiterate, the fifth dimension is space. So now you are able to no longer be locked in the present moment and also no longer be locked into a singular space. You can experience all things at all times. That's why it's you know, universal consciousness, it's cosmic, up here, cosmic consciousness. You know, being able to experience all things at once. Like, like I said before in uh, week one, you know, you have these two lines on the outside. Out here in the physical, way out here in the 3D in the physical, the beginning of the journey, these lines seem very separate. You and I seem very separate. We're connected now through the, this internet, but we're, we feel like we're very separate. The further and deeper within you go, the closer and more connected you feel with other people. Until you get all the way into the highest, most point of the mind, the field of experience, and you understand that we are all one. It's actually connected. These aren't two separate lines. It's just one outer border that is bent in two different directions. But it's all the same. It's all one. We can experience ourselves as one. And so that's what the fifth dimension of, of space is conveying. So let's go back to here. So since the uh, current ship is, oh yeah, in, oh yeah, so that's what I was saying. This quote is to drive home the point that we are moving into the causal level. The father's experiences are the cause of the son's experiences. So the superconscious mind being, having that blueprint is what's causing you to experience the things within your life. Everything in your life, no matter whether it's, you know, you're seeing your universal law of perspective, how you see anything is, is how you're going to see everything. So no matter what's going on in your life and how you're seeing it, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, you know, you're, you're going through a bad time in life and you're depressed and, you know, all this stuff happens to you. You know, I was, I was talking to my friend earlier. And that's kind of what I'm explaining. He's, he's depressed because, you know, he, you know, all this stuff has happened. And so a lot of stuff is going on. You know, I've been there. I've been there. The very last time I was in a, a similar state like that, not like pressure or anything, but just like shit just seems like nothing's going, it just seems like nothing's going right and everything's going wrong. The main thing that got me out of it was when I, it, it snapped and I finally realized like, oh my God, I teach this all the time. Why do I, why did I not think about this sooner? Everything in life is either manifesting your desires, you know, man, fulfilling the blueprint for you, on your soul's purpose, or it is 
They are to stimulate you to change in the necessary ways in order to manifest your desires, one or the other. It's either helping pushing you forward where you're needing to go, or it's helping to push you in the right direction to make the proper changes that you need to make in order to get where you need to go. Causal. So in here, you know, there's a point where they unite hands. Hands represent purpose. You must align your purpose with your soul's purpose, which is found in the superconscious mind. You know, the superconscious mind is holding that blueprint. That's why, like Tommy Lee Jones, who's the father, he's telling him, like, ah, man, I didn't care about anything going on on Earth. I didn't care about you, your mom. I didn't care about none of that stuff. Because the superconscious mind is so far detached, it understands not to be, like, not to take things that are going on in life so serious. Like, don't be so attached to everything going on in life. It's, it's only going to happen for 80 to 160 years, you know, depending on your level of belief and, uh, you know, the, how strong of a habit you have in your mind of dying. Anyways, that's a whole nother conversation. But, um, you know, this lifetime is so short in comparison to the, the lifetime of your soul. And even that is so short comparison in comparison to the lifetime of your spirit. And so from the perspective of the superconscious mind, the things that are happening within the conscious mind and your physical life are, are so minute in comparison to the grand scheme of what your purpose is for this life. And so that's why he's saying these things is to convey this perspective. So I didn't put, I didn't put all of that on there or else we have like five more slides. <laughs> it's already too good. Okay, we're almost to the end. So with this new alignment of conscious, subconscious, and superconscious, you will begin to receive more and more downloads of superconscious thoughts throughout your day and within your meditations. That is because you have cleared out the emotions you can receive from these higher thoughts. You have unified these minds. You have created a stronger relationship with your soul and your spirit. So just like, just like your closest friends and family members, you hear from them a lot more often than you hear from you know, the guy you ran into at the grocery store the other day. You know what I mean? You're never going to hear from that guy. You know what I mean? And so, you know, you hear from your best friend all the time. And so you've created a stronger and closer relationship with your subconscious, superconscious. So you will receive the superconscious thoughts and you will receive the subconscious thoughts more and more. So the data download, you know, data download initiated. He's downloading the data and taking it back to earth. All of the data that his dad found. You know, you have access to all of that. When you, when you unify, the more unified you are, the more access you have to it. So when they're leaving, you know, he takes off. He takes off even further because his purpose, he understands that his purpose is to go beyond the mind, beyond the spirit. And then he, you know, bliss drifts off into nothingness. Because the field of experience, he's no longer experiencing anything. You know, so beyond the whole field of experience, he understands that his purpose is eventually to know the self beyond the mind, beyond the vehicles of experiencing the mind. So he, that's what he says, let me go, Roy. And, and like I said, he's the only one that ever calls him Roy. Everybody else calls him Major. You know, the, the ego does too, on the other end. But um, anyways, to continue to grow, you must learn how to let go. Attachment is the root of all suffering. The more attached you are to things, then the more you will suffer when you need to let them go or, or when they are gone. So now, you know, letting him go doesn't mean he has to, you know, forget about him. You know, when you're, let, when, when you're letting things go, you're no longer being attached to them. That doesn't mean, you know, they're gone forever. They're just, you know, no longer that way. And you need to you know, let go of how, how you experienced it. So now he's on the way back. He's on the way back and he says, two, Earth is 2.714 billion miles away. So remember, zero represents power. 2.714. 2 plus 7 plus 1 plus 4 equals 14. 1 plus 4 equals 5. 5 is reasoning. The power of the conscious mind. Your power, like when you've unified the conscious, subconscious, superconscious mind, the power of your subconscious mind is magnified sixfold. So much more powerful than just 5. I mean, such a bigger number than just 5. This number signifies that we are headed back to the body on this journey now. Yeah, so five also let you know where we're going. We're going back to the conscious mind, going back to the body. 
due to all that we have experienced, the power of the conscious mind has grown exponentially more powerful. When he gets there, he finally lands. You're all right, Major. These guys are so excited to pull him out. I mean, after aligning the conscious subconscious minds and attuning them to the superconscious mind, the aspects, aspects of your conscious mind are fully on board with all lining, with aligning with the soul's purpose. I made all of these since like 12 noon this morning and finished like five minutes, literally five minutes before the live started um, on the little TikTok live for the giveaway. Uh, and, and he says, you are all right, Major, meaning all right, right, the righteous path, all of you. The, your whole, you've unified the self. The whole self is now on board with the righteous path because as you've gone through, you have transformed all of the parts of yourself that are not in alignment with this righteous path. So welcome back. We are all on board here, Major. So that is the journey of the, uh, of the initiate on, into the adept. And now we have the final monologue, letting you know the mind state of the adept. He says, very similar to the beginning. I am steady, calm. I slept well, no bad dreams. It's like in the very beginning, I said that. I am calm, steady. I slept well, 8.2 hours, no bad dreams. I mean, 8.2 hours isn't there anymore. New level of learning of individuality because he's, he's way beyond that level that he was on before. Understanding himself as an individual is so far beyond that now. I am steady, calm, I slept well, no bad dreams. I am active and engaged. I am aware of my surroundings and those in my immediate sphere. I'm attentive. I'm focused on the essential to the exclusion of all else. I'm unsure of the future, but I am not concerned. I will rely on those closest to me and I will share their burdens as they share mine. I will live and, and love, submit. Now there's more interconnectedness. He's aware of, of other people and their experience and how his relationship with them causes what it, that causes for their relationship, you know, for their, their experience. And, and, you know, the, the connection that his choices have on other people, you know, whereas before as the initiate, I mean, it, it showed a picture of like, you know, his, his wife or ex-wife or whatever, just like leaving, right. As he's saying, you know, I will not allow myself to be distracted. You know, I will I will now allow myself to linger on that which is unimportant. You know, and so then now coming full circle, oh wow, you know, yes, what I am my path and everything is very important, but I'm also here for others as well. So that's that's what all of this is saying, this this whole mind state of the adept, someone who is adept at self-awareness, someone who has cultivated a level of skills at self-awareness, soul growth and spiritual development is someone who is calm. They have increased awareness. You know, that's what all this is saying. Where are my surroundings and those in my immediate sphere? I'm attentive, focused on what is essential, remain present, empathic, understanding interconnectedness, exist in universal love. I will live in love, meaning I will exist in love. Because that's that's why that's why, you know. Through the interconnectedness, here we go. Superconscious mind, you know, it's also cosmic consciousness, it's also called Christ consciousness. Because through understanding the interconnectedness and that we are all one, that's why Christ focused so much on love, loving yourself, loving your neighbor as yourself. Because we are all connected. Any way you treat someone else is how you're going to end up being treated. And the universal law of attraction, universal law of cause and effect, universal law of relativity, <laughs> universal law of perspective, all of it. You know, exist in universal love. And how does he end it again? Submit. Submit to the will of the higher self. The adept always submit to the will of the higher self. Yeah, you may have some ideas of what you want to do in life in your conscious mind. You know, yeah, man, I want to I want to be rich, have a lot of money, but I mean, what is that money going to do for you? Once you have a lot of money, then what are you going to do with your day? <laughs> submit to the will of the higher self. No matter what you consciously think you might be wanting to do, make sure that you are in alignment with you know, the, the soul, soul purpose of your superconscious mind. And if that, if that purpose conflicts with what you're consciously wanting to do, then your conscious desires need to submit to the will of the higher self. That's a, that's a 
It's a blessing for me. Took me on a big detour a few years. All right. So that is the movie. Going from the initiate to the adept. Next week's class, we're going to go over the different types of dreams. Precognitive dreams, visitation dreams, and incubation dreams. And also lucid dreams and being able to incubate lucid dreams as well.